Like most millennials, I have a constant crippling anxiety about time. There's never enough of it, it goes far too quickly, and the ever-present pressure that is caused by its unwavering, unrelenting march onwards keeps me awake at night in a constant state of existential dread, asking questions for which there is no possible answer. Why are we here? What is time? Is time just a construct of human perception? An illusion created by- <laughs> And during my ever-dwindling existence while the sands of time drip slowly through the hourglass, I sometimes like to play Warhammer. Yes, this is the way I'm going to segue into the rest of the video. Whatever you may think of Warhammer 40k in its current or past states, both 9th and 10th editions, the editions I've played recently, have some guidance on the length of time a game should take for certain points level. According to the rules, a 2,000 point game of 40k should take up to 3 hours. <laughs> You serious? Now, before you start commenting, I'm aware that for tournaments, each game is given around three hours, each player usually getting around 90 minutes on a chess clock, but this isn't an unachievable number. But like most players of this game, I'm a filthy casual. With the limited games I get to play, a 2,000 point game can take up to double the estimate. And I imagine for new players who look at this thinking a game should take three hours, they're going to be for a nasty surprise for their first time. I also don't think it scales linearly like this table suggests. It says a 1k game takes two hours, a 2k game takes three hours, and a 3k game takes four hours. I don't think 1k extra points equals one extra hour based on how fast some of the 1k games I've had, depending on what you bring to a smaller game. It feels more likely there is some actual exponential scaling based on how big the game is, purely for having just more stuff to move, more things to shoot, and having each unit be a larger part of a bigger army. Smaller part of a bigger army. Damn it! There are definitely a few things not taken into account with the three hour expectation that most people are going to encounter outside of tournament environments. For new players, you're going to be constantly looking up rules, checking stuff, exploring all the options, learning your army, your opponent's army, and getting into a fight over the interpretations of rules written. For casual but more experienced players, three hours works if you're not expecting to also, you know, have fun with your friends, having a chat, eating snacks, generally having a more relaxed and leisurely pace while you slowly think about your moves and then inevitably make the wrong one anyway. One thing that is stopping me from playing more is, as an aforementioned millennial, I am busy and constantly tired. I'm not a morning person, yet for some reason society deems it I can't be a degenerate gremlin staying up all night into the early hours anymore, so I need to be in bed at a reasonable time. But trying to play a 2k point game that could go up as a 46 hours in an evening is not really viable. Playing on the weekend? Absolutely not a problem. Uh, what weekend are you free? Oh, no, I know, I'm busy then. All right, let's, uh, let's compare calendars. Um, oh yeah, cool. Oh yeah, let's get a game in sometime in August. 2027. I have some vague aspiration or desire to at some point play in a tournament, so at some point I'll actually need to be able to be fast enough to fit a game to those three hours. Tournaments also require fully painted armies, so it'll be a while until that's a reality. Yes, I am working on it, you don't have to tell me that my army's unpainted. I know! Stop telling me! It would also be nice to be able to guarantee or at least expect a game to be able to fit into an evening. So in his experiment to see how far away from that goal my current abilities are, I recently did a game playing with a chess clock. My initial worries with having that chess clock looming over me would that would cause me to stress out. Time limits are not a thing I'm a huge fan of in stuff like video games, for example. Most of the time, missing something or running out of time just frustrates me rather than feeling like a fun, high-intensity challenge. Things like Mythic Plus in World of Warcraft, the trade quests in Zelda, or this anxiety-inducing piece of music that probably caused some of you to have an involuntary panic attack. Sorry. It actually turned out to be fine, honestly. I kind of tuned out the clock, but didn't play it super strictly like you would in a tournament. My understanding is normally you'd swap it every time your opponent rolled any dice, but just for a first try, we basically just swapped it after each turn or during melee combat activations, making a decision that required thought, like whether or not to use a certain stratagem, and then again make the wrong choice anyway. I still had to refer to my data cards a lot, and in fact, I put my data cards on the other side of the room, and rather than picking them all up and bringing them closer to me, I kept having to run back and forth across the room to look at each data card individually, because I'm an absolute idiot. But as I knew most of the stuff that was on the data sheet, it was more just to double check or have a quick look rather than have to scan through the data sheet and do everything that way. The main advantage of the chess clock was reducing or eliminating analysis paralysis. With the time limit in mind, I found myself not doing the standard thing of pondering over every single move. Instead, there was a lot more going with the gut, more decisive moves that made sense without over-analyzing every possibility. Did that lead to making more mistakes? <laughs> Absolutely, I made a ton of mistakes, but the nice thing about playing fast is you get to make mistakes faster. Normally I might make a few mistakes, then six hours later when the game is over, I can lament over those mistakes I made and learn from them, but as each decision takes so long, it's hard to remember exactly what part of that decision-making process was the mistake. I do have examples, but one of the issues with going fast was that I forgot to take any pictures outside the deployment, so I'm gonna have to use some high-tech recreation to demonstrate. 
right. I think the best example of one of these mistakes is this move here. Early on, I decided to move these Devastator Centurions onto this point here to be in the ruin and to hold this objective. Later on, I wanted to use this stratagem to put them into reserves. I hadn't thought about who would hold that objective, so the Redemptor I'd moved over was a few millimeters out of range. I had to make a decision between going 10 points down by removing the Devastators to get them into a better position later, or keep them there for another round and potentially lose out on their shooting. The game ended in a draw. Had I moved my Redemptor slightly closer, I would have won. And there were a lot of decisions and moves like that on both sides. My opponent made some unfortunate choices to where he put his Terminators and lay them out on a silver platter. His one remaining unit, a Dread Knight on a single health, could teleport away and take at least one objective, which evened out the 10 point deficit I made for myself in round two. I don't think going any slower, I would have caught that mistake because I imagine I would have agonized over loads of other different decisions and been in a completely different place in the first place. But now I've learned very quickly to one, don't hold objectives of the unit you intend to remove from the board, and two, ensure that I have backups for objectives. For a first go with the chest lock, I actually found it quite fun, quite good. We finished at a really good time, coming in in just under three hours for a full five round game. It did help that I was playing against Grey Knights, I suppose, seeing as turn one, most of his army wasn't on the board or was hiding out of line of sight. So my turn one took me less than three minutes, but still really fun game. I'd recommend giving it a go for those who are somewhere between casual and semi-confident. You'll make mistakes for sure, but if you struggle with constant analysis paralysis, this will give you the chance to make the choice and learn from the consequences. Something else I suggest is playing someone casually with a chest lock, but not strictly. For truly beginner players, I would absolutely not suggest using a chest lock. Warhammer is complicated. So take your time with it. Start off smaller. There's no need to dive into a 2k game straight away with all the bells and whistles immediately. It'll just get confusing. Don't worry about the time, just expect that your first few games are going to take a lot longer than the rules imply. For example, I've started learning Age of Sigma, and our first game was only 1k points, and did not use a whole bunch of stuff just to allow us to get a feel for the game. I think this is a much better approach for completely new players, and I'd recommend that for Age of Sigma 40k or any game you play. I would have talked about my first experience with Age of Sigma, but for one, I decided to start learning it right at the time a new edition came out, and secondly, what I learned from that game was it's very hard to win if you literally do not roll anything higher than a 3 on any d6 for your entire turn, and you're playing an army that moves d6 plus x inches, and wants to charge ASAP, and my dice are cursed, and I want to Burn them in the f and of course, using a chess clock outside of tournaments is completely optional. And as I mentioned, if you like me and Warhammer as a way to hang out with your buddies, just roll some dice and have some fun. Take all the time you need. Who cares? You don't need to stress about it. You've got plenty of time left.